This woman decided to adopt a parrot to cure her loneliness and spent many years in its company. When she was dying and it was time for her to say her final goodbye, the bird reacted in a way that left many people speechless. Sometimes we are surrounded by people and still feel abandoned. Some people do not desire human companionship and prefer to alleviate their loneliness with the unwavering love of a pet. Cats and dogs are the most common choices, but some people would rather own fish, small reptiles, or birds. The protagonist of our story is a lady who found companionship in a bird, a parrot that lived a bit longer than the average house pet. She lived in Lyon, France, in a small apartment of her own. She was getting older, had no husband or friends, and knew that a pet would keep her company in her lonely house. The rules of her condo stated that she couldn't get a dog or a cat, so she decided to adopt a parrot. She had spoken to her landlord about the possibility of getting a bird, and he had agreed that a parrot would be less annoying than a mammal. Birds mostly stay in their cages and occasionally make noises that are less loud than barking. The woman agreed that this was the best option and began to do her research on parrots. She couldn't just go to any store because parrots are not commonly kept in pet shops. Eventually, after much research and joining communities to discuss the perks of being a parrot owner, she found the perfect companion. He was a special African grey parrot with ash-colored feathers who did not require a large amount of space. It was the perfect match for her, and yet she was still unsure. She feared that perhaps such a special bird would require too much care or would be too costly. However, she went back to visit the parrot several times and eventually warmed up to the idea of becoming his owner. The parrot liked her too. She named him Sinbad and took him home. From the first day, Sinbad would be delighted every time she walked into his room. He would swing and dance and talk to her. Soon enough, the lady realized that they were meant to be. The day that she brought Sinbad home was the day that she found out the rest of her life was going to change. Finally, life wasn't just the same routine over and over again. She now had to take care of Sinbad, and he was a delight to be around. He would sing to her in the morning and repeat the funny phrases he picked up from the street. For all the noise he made, she almost felt like she had another human in the house. They would sit on the balcony while she sipped coffee or watched the sunset together. She made new friends through the parrot owner's community and realized that this pretty bird was exactly what she had been looking for. Owning a pet was a big step for her. A cat or a dog would have been more challenging, but a parrot requires a special kind of commitment. Parrots are incredibly intelligent animals and can live up to 50 years. The woman and her parrot soon became best friends and lived together for 25 years. Now, 25 years is much longer than the typical age span of a dog or a cat. 25 years is a quarter of a century. At first, the lady was amazed at how well Sinbad was doing over the years. She had feared that she might have to rehome him due to her old age, but eventually decided that the two of them would live together until their last breath. Her apartment just seemed brighter with Sinbad in it. She felt less lonely than ever before. When her children visited, they enjoyed his company as well. He was a friendly bird and loved all the attention he received. When visitors came over, he would often show off the tricks he had learned from the woman to get praises and scratches on his head. Sinbad could sing songs, whistle several tunes, and even knew his own name. Sinbad learned many words and tricks over the years and was able to communicate with the human. Some people said that parrots can only repeat back what their owners say, but she felt Sinbad was different. Aside from all the fun tricks he could do, she really felt like he was talking to her. They would always say good morning and good night to each other. She would talk to him about her problems and he seemed to understand, even if his answers didn't always seem to make sense. As their bond grew stronger, so did their emotional attachment to one another. Parrots are some of the most emotionally intelligent creatures in the world and the woman was absolutely convinced that Sinbad knew what she was saying. He was more than just a pet, he was a best friend. Slowly, as time went on, the woman got older and her health started to decline. She tried to live at home as long as she could, but her body was failing her quickly. 
One moment she felt healthy and strong, and the next she had to sit down and rest her tired joints. She knew she didn't have much longer, but she didn't want to believe it. After all, she still had to take care of Sinbad. She decided that she would just go see the doctor for a quick checkup. One visit turned into two and three and four, and before she knew it, she was also seeing specialists and visiting the hospital often. Sinbad was left alone for longer and longer hours. The lady always tried to book appointments in the middle of the day so that she could still say good morning and good night to her friend without much interruption to her schedule. The parrot, as we mentioned, was very intelligent. He knew that something was wrong and started to tell her that he loved her much more often. For a while, his thoughtfulness brought her a little light and energy, but it didn't last for long. Eventually, she was admitted to the hospital where she learned that she didn't have much time left. The doctors made sure to tell her family to say their last goodbyes. Those final days were filled with tears and brave plans made about what sort of funeral she wanted. It was during this time that the woman's daughter took Sinbad with her on a visit to the hospital. The parrot seemed to realize the weight of the situation and stayed close to his owner the entire time. Even though he was normally very active and chatty, Sinbad was particularly quiet that day. Of course, no one had told him that he was going to the hospital or that his owner was unwell, but it seemed that no one had needed to. Perhaps he had really understood when the woman had talked about her troubles at home, or perhaps he could simply sense the atmosphere in the room. Either way, it was clear that he knew. He remained next to his owner, hopping around on the bed, trying to check if she was alright. The woman's daughter asked her mother to say some last words to Sinbad, to let him know that she would miss him. Frail and tired, the dying woman mustered up the strength to say, I love you, to her beloved parrot. As soon as these words were said, the parrot reacted in such a heartbreaking way. Sinbad seemed to become more alive. Just hearing the voice of his owner gave the bird hope. Unfortunately, that didn't last long. It was the woman's final goodbye to her beloved Sinbad. It may surprise many of you how much emotional connection birds can feel with their owners. In fact, science shows that parrots can feel depressed after going through a traumatic event like losing a loved one. There are even antidepressants available for birds like Sinbad. Sinbad was adopted by the woman's daughter, and although they haven't had as much time to bond as he did with his original owner, it seems things are going well. She has promised to take care of Sinbad until the end of his days, and together they can remember her mother and the special bond they all had. Hello everyone. 3D printing was only in science fiction not long ago. Now it has been widely used in daily life. 3D printing is already helping animals a lot. What is 3D printing? In short, 3D printing is a manufacturing technique. It is a three-dimensional product based on a digital model. But how this technology is making life easier for many animals. We will tell some interesting cases in today's program. This story is about a puppy who was born with a STD. This chihuahua named Roy was born without front legs. The puppy's fate seems destined to be miserable. But its owner decided to give the puppy a chance at a happy life. He left it at the shelter hoping the dog would find a loving owner. Luck did favor this little dog. Veterinarian Ashley Olson of Indianapolis loved it and brought it home. He tried to make a set of wheeled toys out of plastic tubes and parts for it to use. After seeing the news about this dog. Mark Derrick, director of a 3D printing company in San Diego, decided to help this puppy with a 3D mobile stroller. They ended up creating 10 moving 3D carts. Their structure can be replaced as the dog grows. This lucky chain of events allowed the puppy to finally move fast. That's how it got its name. What follows is a story about Dimak, the Russian cat who was badly frostbitten. The cat was brought to Norfolk Veterinary Clinic in October 2018. They noticed that its limbs were badly frostbitten. Veterinarians decided to amputate its legs and tail. Dimak can only move by crawling and it has a poor appetite. Animals in this condition are often euthanized. 
but Dr. S.G. decided to install a bionic prosthesis for it. He analyzed the possibility. Its new legs are digitally modeled and 3D printed in titanium. Unique porous structure enables maximum joint integration. Animal bones will be fused to the titanium prosthesis to prevent body from rejecting it. It is also overlaid with a special calcium phosphate-based biological code. The biocode was developed by scientists of Tomsk Polytechnic University. This makes implants look like a bone. This minimizes the possibility of rejection. Prosthetics are implanted into the bones of the cat's front and rear legs. They also attached little claws to it. That's made of flexible plastic and can be replaced as needed. Seven months later, the prosthesis is fully implanted in Dimak's body. It's unbelievable. It's almost healed. It can walk, run, walk upstairs, and it bounces amazingly. Amputated Duck A duck at a Tennessee waterfowl sanctuary was born with its left foot turned backwards. Physiotherapy and alternative treatments used by doctors are ineffective. The disease caused this duck a lot of pain. So its foot was amputated. This is to make its life easier. Workers try to make a wooden prosthetic. But that's uncomfortable and heavy for ducks. Volunteers then turn to a company that specializes in 3D printing, asking them to provide silicone prosthetics for the ducks. That is a premium replica. Actually, it's another duck's left foot. It is used as a sample for 3D models. Ducks with prosthetic legs become popular on social networks. It has its own Facebook account. There are many fans who follow the duck prosthetics closely and are interested in the life of this unique bird. This company has developed several 3D prosthetic variants for the duck. It uses this to waddle and swim on the surface of the water. Special Christmas Holiday Model Stepped On by Thai Elephant Martha at 7 months old. But no one knows there's a mine under there. It lost its front leg in the accident. To give this poor animal a chance to live a normal life. Thailand Elephant Rescue Center and Asian Elephant Foundation turned to renowned Thai surgeon TCJ for help. He is a doctor with extensive experience in 3D printing. The doctor didn't turn them away, he agreed to help the huge animal while meeting its needs. So he started working on prosthetics. As Martha grew, so did the rest of the prosthetic. Its prosthetics have also been improved. Nine surgeries and nine years. With the careful work of surgeons and the care of animal rescue organizations. Martha becomes the first elephant to have a prosthetic. The prosthesis weighs 15 kilograms. It's durable and not too heavy for an elephant. And. Prosthetics are 3D printed from steel frames. They used thermoplastics and elastomers. This beautiful toucan has a very large beak. In Latin America, it was attacked by rogues. It lost a vital organ, the beak. Toucans use it to get food and preen their feathers. When the Humane Society found the bird. It can no longer survive in nature. They decided to raise money to make a 3D beak for it and name the prosthesis after it. They posted on a crowdfunding site asking for help. Misfortunes of birds affect people greatly. The project raised over $10,000 in two days. Beak prosthesis must be light but strong. The bird would continue to grow, so they decided to create a two-part artificial beak. The inside of the beak can be removed for disinfection. The upper part can be replaced as it grows. Birds' beaks are also unique markers to attract females. So they're going to use some different bright colors on its beak. Here's the benefit of having a prosthetic too, helping this toucan reproduce. Horse with bad hoof. Holly, a white mare from Australia, suffers from a dreaded hoof disease. This can seriously affect the animal's hooves. Disease that causes swelling inside the hoof, resulting in poor blood supply. It also compresses the soft tissues of the legs. Severe pain afflicts animals not only when walking, but also when standing. Vet Lickwell Smith offers to ease Holly's pain. 
For this he turned to Australia's National Science Agency in Sydney. Experts at the centre were able to 3D print a titanium horseshoe. This re-enables the horse to have a hoof. And they reduce the weight of the hooves, which relieves the animal's pain. Finally Holly was able to walk and even run again. Sometimes the fight to save animals takes an unexpected turn. South Africa's Inverdorn Game Reserve director Damien Vernet recommends a ban on products made from rhino horn. The reason he did it was for animal safety. The death rate of the endangered white rhino is high. They are widely killed by poachers. The main reason they are killed is because of rhino horns. This is the main reason for the suffering of those unfortunate animals. What happens when the rhino loses its horn, how would they survive without the protection of their rhino horns, some propose replacing horns with 3D, printed prosthetics made of aluminum and plastic. It's fully functional and not offensive to anyone. The idea of rhino horns has been tested. We hope that greedy poachers will stop harming other animals. Turtle without shell. Brazilian tortoise Flanders suffers from a horrific fire. It was exposed to high temperatures, and the turtle shell went from cracking to completely shattered. A turtle cannot survive without a shell. But an animal rescue group called Animal Avengers came forward. They have surgeons on their team, they decided to save the reptile. They did a lot of preparation for this project. In order to make an artificial shell exactly like its shell. The scale model of the turtle shell used thousands of photos of Flanders and other turtles. It's necessary. Taking into account the specific characteristics of the injured animal. They have difficulty customizing prosthetics to the individual size of the injured animal. The frame structure is manufactured with the help of a 3D printer. Then the designer also added the required composite material by using printing technology. They are lightweight but durable. Its distinctive shell was originally white. But after an artist manipulates it, it acquires a natural look. Looking at Flanders today, it's hard to guess what it has gone through. Crows are renowned as one of the most intelligent bird species on earth. However, when an elderly man, Arnold Harrison, began feeding a local raven, he had no idea of the extraordinary gift it would bring him. This gift moved him to tears. Arnold Harrison had led a remarkable life. As a young man in his twenties, he had met the love of his life, a woman named Amelia. From their first encounter, they became inseparable, embarking on thrilling adventures together across the globe. After eloping and getting married, Arnold and Amelia returned to their hometown, deciding to settle down and start a family. While they cherished the adventures they had experienced, they both felt a void in their lives. After discussing it, they realized their shared desire to have a family of their own. It didn't take long for Amelia to become pregnant. The news filled both soon-to-be parents with immense joy, eager to embrace this new chapter of their lives. They longed to impart their wisdom about life and the beauty of the world to their child. Nine months later, after a challenging pregnancy, Amelia gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. The couple named her Joy, as she truly brought boundless joy into their lives. Amelia and Arnold proved to be exceptional parents, nurturing their daughter's innate curiosity, determination, and adventurous spirit. Together, the family embarked on countless trips, allowing Joy to explore and discover the wonders of the world. However, among all the marvels they encountered, it was birds that captivated Joy's heart. Wherever the family went, Joy's fascination with these creatures only grew stronger. Joy took her binoculars and bird sighting book to explore what she could discover. During her adventures, the young girl came across several rare birds, but her favorites were the common yet highly intelligent crows. Joy delighted in observing them as they flew around, solving complex problems such as cracking open hard nuts that their beaks couldn't handle. Often, Joy would provide these tough nuts to the black birds and observe how they tackled the challenge of accessing the food inside the shells. Frequently, the crows would take the nuts and drop them onto the road, waiting for passing cars to crush them open. Fascinated by these remarkable creatures, Joy happily fed them in her garden every day. 
As time went by, she accumulated a small group of crows who would regularly visit her garden for food. This continued over the next few years as Joy transitioned from a young girl to a young adult. Every day, like clockwork, the group of crows would show up and squawk until Joy fed them. Among them, one particular crow caught Joy's attention. It appeared like an ordinary bird except for the fact that it was missing one eye. Appreciating irony, Joy affectionately named this crow Blinky. Out of all the crows, Blinky became her favorite, and she often gave it extra portions of food to express her fondness. In return, Blinky would bring Joy shiny objects that it seemed to treasure. The fact that the bird was willing to offer these shiny trinkets left Joy feeling immensely happy and privileged to have earned the crow's friendship. As Joy reached adulthood, she decided to enlist in the army. She had always believed it would be an adventurous and fulfilling career path, distinct from that of her parents. Upon hearing the news of their daughter's decision, Arnold and Amelia were conflicted in their emotions. They were pleased with Joy's pursuit of her dreams on her own terms, but they couldn't help but worry about the dangers of her chosen profession in the army. The couple understood that things could go terribly wrong in an instant, but knowing they couldn't dissuade Joy, they gave her their blessings and hoped for her safe return. However, there was one individual Joy couldn't explain her sudden absence to, Blinky. Even after Joy left for boot camp, the crow would still show up daily, demanding its food. The bird had grown accustomed to its routine and couldn't comprehend why Joy wasn't there to greet it with a warm smile and a handful of seeds and nuts. After a week of the persistent crow squawking in the garden for hours on end, Arnold had finally had enough. Arnold and Amelia had spent much of their youth traveling and didn't have a child until their mid-forties. As a result, Arnold was already an older man when Joy joined the army, enjoying a peaceful retirement with no obligations. Determined to do something about the crow, Arnold decided to take up Joy's responsibilities while she was away. Every morning, the old man would wake up early and ensure he had an ample supply of seeds and nuts for all the birds in the garden. Initially, Arnold considered this task to be nothing more than a chore, a way to quiet down the birds. However, as days went by, he began to appreciate the beauty of their presence and the joy they brought to the garden. He found solace in nurturing the feathered visitors and took pleasure in their company. As the days and weeks passed, Arnold increasingly looked forward to observing the birds that visited each day. Blinky, the crow, faithfully appeared to eat the food provided. However, whenever Arnold tried to approach Blinky, the bird would promptly fly away. Arnold noticed that Blinky seemed slightly more hesitant around him compared to his daughter, Joy. Nonetheless, the determined older man wanted to earn the bird's trust. Blinky was the closest thing Joy had to a pet, as she believed in allowing wild animals to thrive in their natural environments. With a great deal of patience, waiting, and tempting Blinky with various foods, Arnold finally succeeded in convincing the crow to eat from his hand. The old man was thrilled with this achievement, and he and Blinky gradually developed a strong friendship. Blinky became as significant to Arnold as he was to Joy. However, a few weeks after their friendship had blossomed, Arnold and Amelia received devastating news. Joy had been injured while on a mission abroad. Overwhelmed with worry and grief, Arnold and Amelia didn't receive many details from the army, only that Joy needed to take leave to recover. As the days passed without Joy's return, Arnold's anxiety grew. Each morning, he would sit outside with the birds, feeding them bread, but his worried and preoccupied demeanor left Blinky particularly perplexed. The bird sensed that something was wrong but couldn't grasp the exact nature of the problem. In an attempt to uplift his newfound friend's spirits, Blinky began bringing Arnold an assortment of shiny objects, much like it had done for joy. One day, a crow brought Arnold an old ring. When the old man saw it, he couldn't believe his eyes. It was the very ring he had given Joy when she was younger. Engraved inside the ring were the words, forever loved and treasured. Joy had lost the ring at the park while out with friends, and she had been devastated, crying for two days. When Arnold saw the ring brought by the crow, he couldn't help but break down in tears. 
He felt that the gift was a sign from a higher power, possibly God, indicating that things would be all right and that he would find Joy alive and well. A few days later, Joy returned home, stepping off the plane. Although she looked a little beaten up with some scrapes and bruises, she didn't have any major injuries. Amelia and Arnold hugged their daughter tightly, relieved that she was safe and sound, back in their arms. After their embrace, Arnold showed Joy the ring given by Blinky, the crow. He told her that when he had feared the worst, the crow had reassured him that everything would be okay. Joy was shocked to see the found ring and immediately put it back on her finger. She also understood that it symbolized good fortune and love, and it was Blinky's way of showing that they cared for her and her family. Joy, Arnold, and Amelia made sure to continue feeding all the crows that visited their garden, but they reserved a special spot for Blinky. They spoiled Blinky with extra food and treats. Although Joy was saddened by the loss of her friend, she knew that Blinky would always watch over her. It was an incredible story, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing videos. Eagles are majestic birds with peculiar behavior patterns, often preoccupied with hunting, feeding and soaring. Yet the hawk showed up outside the veterinarian's office several times, confusing staff for weeks until they realized what the bird was doing and the reason for its visits left everyone speechless. The Quebec Wildlife Rehabilitation Center is a place to help animals of all kinds from across Canada and North America. The staff at this veterinary clinic regularly treats wild and domestic animals. They are used to seeing creatures on the verge of life and death. So when a bald eagle was found lying in agony in the Nova Scotia forest, clinic staff were well prepared to treat it urgently. The eagle was flown to Quebec, where it was examined and treated. Mordo Mesa, the clinic's resident ornithologist, led the work. Because of her gigantic size, Mordo affectionately named her Eagle Basra, in homage to the Godzilla movies. Now Basra is so weak that she doesn't even have the strength to fly, and she can't even stand up by herself. When she arrived at the clinic, she was slow and docile. Mordo sees this as a warning sign, since healthy eagles are often violent and aggressive. For example, Basra lay still and underwent x-rays, which revealed that she was frail and low on energy. A healthy bird will struggle and need to be restrained to get a clear x-ray. Mordo confirmed that Basra's consciousness was fading, and that staff would need to diagnose the problem and begin treatment as quickly as possible if she was to survive. After more tests, the clinic concluded that Basra had lead poisoning, possibly from years of eating lead. Fragments from his prey. This is the number one concern for Basra's health. Due to lead poisoning, she had several incidental issues such as dehydration, extreme cold, and a high number of parasites. So workers treated Basra for lead poisoning by injecting her with a drug that stabilizes blood chemistry. They also worked to make her feel more comfortable by removing the lice and giving her warmth and water. Basra received the best care and was able to continue the fight for her life. It was especially odd that another vulture started visiting the veterinary clinic after Basra was rescued. Staff were baffled when they spotted a second eagle flying by and waiting in a nearby tree. Is this another animal in need? Workers in Quebec couldn't be sure, but they very much suspected that something strange was going on. As far north as Nova Scotia, Canada, bald eagles are uncommon. The appearance of the second eagle so soon after Basra was too coincidental to happen by chance. Trusting that Basra will be cared for by his wonderful staff, Mordo goes out to investigate the second eagle to assess whether it needs help as well. However, this task proved to be easier said than done. Because the bird is very aggressive and appears angry when Mordo approaches. This is typical behavior for any eagle or large bird of prey. But at the same time it seemed very abnormal. Why do eagles visit the same place over and over again? Just sitting there not hunting or eating. This is indeed a very special case. Mado tried to get closer, but it was not cooperative. It should not suffer from lead poisoning like Basra, as it is healthier and more energetic. But why on earth would healthy animals show up near Quebec? 
As the days passed and the clinic continued to treat and monitor Basra, she appeared to be slowly regaining her strength. Meanwhile, staff are keeping an eye on their new eagle friend, who has set up camp near the clinic. Basra continued her treatment and received regular injections, a treatment known as chelation. When she recovered, Basra regained her strength and personality. This is the main way Mado sees life pouring back into Basra. After a few days of treatment, Mordo noticed some small improvements in his condition, and he was particularly excited when Basra began to behave well after a few days. Things are looking up and staff are happy to see their life-saving efforts paying off. But no one can relax until she is fully healed. Every day, their second eagle friend also comes to the clinic. They continue to monitor the bird, checking for lead poisoning or injuries, but basically looking for a reason for the hawk's strange behavior. Every day, Quebec workers are disappointed by their inability to solve the mystery. What is this eagle doing there? It doesn't get close to people, but it doesn't want to be too far away either. Is it possible that this eagle was trying to hunt in poor Basra's weakened state? This may explain why it keeps showing up outside the clinic. If it's waiting for food, Mordo will turn his attention to the new eagle once Basra's recovered. She tried leaving some food for it to see if it was actually waiting there, but the bird wouldn't eat anything people gave it. Instead, the bird started doing the opposite of taking food from the clinic staff. Eagles would go hunting, leaving food and trophies at the clinic, so Mordo knew the bird would hunt, which was a good natural sign. The hawk also appeared angry most of the time, which is typical, and luckily for everyone, hunger wasn't the reason the hawk was in this small Nova Scotia town. So why is it behaving so strangely? The real reason melts everyone's hearts. The time has finally come to release Basra back into the wild. Mado and his crew are thrilled to see this magnificent bird back in its natural habitat. But they also worry about what will happen when their patient encounters another eagle. However, Basra is ready for the next phase of her recovery, which includes flying and returning to the skies. Mordo, wearing protective gear, took Basra outdoors. He was pleased to see Basra eagerly spread his wings and wriggled away. Her natural instincts were fully restored, so she flew out of Mado's hands. Soar through the skies above the forests of Quebec, ever upwards. However, Basra's triumph was interrupted as a second eagle flew towards her. Clinic staff watched in horror as the eagle swooped down on Basra. Is she about to get hurt again? She didn't run away from the other hawk, nor did she try to fight it. Instead, he turned around and continued flying quietly. But the bird swooped down on her again, and once again the Quebec team panicked and brainstormed ways to help Basra. Until the insightful Mordor noticed something that shocked them all. Basra didn't run away or hunt down another hawk as they played and danced together in the air. You see, the second eagle is a male. Not only that, but he is Basra's partner. He followed his partner and watched. His health decline. Then after she was rescued, he waited patiently outside the center while she received treatment. This is a love story between two eagles who struggle to survive and stay together. Basra's partner has been waiting for her for days and may not know whether she is alive or dead in the clinic. What an incredible relationship these birds have. Staff continue to admire the sight of the eagles flying around together, all looking healthier in their natural environment. Eventually, the birds flew out of sight and staff knew they had not only saved a large eagle, but her mate as well. However, the surprises did not end there. Stay tuned for the puzzling reasons behind the eagle's behavior. In the quiet segment left by the hawks, a smart staffer pointed to the real reason behind the hawk's odd behavior. They realized Basra's mate had been trying to help feed her. He drops dead prey in an attempt to deliver food to his weakened mate, knowing she cannot hunt on her own. Now this is a love story that has been passed down through the ages. So known that from ancient times until our present day, hunting has always played an important role in human life, especially during the dawn of civilization. It was almost the only way to obtain food. However, nowadays it has become a recreational activity for pleasure and excitement. 
Unfortunately, acts of cruelty during hunting are often an integral part of this destructive pursuit. But there are cases where human actions are completely devoid of logic and only cause suffering to the animals. One such incident occurred in India, in one of the provinces located in the northwest of the country. As it is known, in this state, the contrast between luxury and poverty is so striking that anything can happen within its borders. Early in the morning, a resident of one of the villages woke up to the sound of stray dogs growling in the makeshift dump. Understanding that the hungry dogs had cornered some animal, the man quickly got dressed and went outside. However, before the man could take ten steps, an astonishing sight unfolded before his eyes. At first, the man thought that what he saw was merely a product of his sick imagination. But when the Indian rubbed his eyes and looked closer, he realized that everything was happening right in front of him. The stray dogs had cornered not just anyone, but a full-grown leopard who, despite its impressive size, looked very strange. The astonishment of the Indians was also explained by the fact that the leopard was completely devoid of a head, or rather, it was certainly present, but it had a very peculiar shape and was brightly shining in the rays of the morning sun. The cornered beast growled angrily and fiercely fought off the pack of hungry dogs with its body. The astonished man approached closer and unable to contain his emotions, burst into laughter. The sight of a shiny milk can instead of a head on the leopard was familiar to every Indian since childhood. After having a good laugh, the Indian still showed sympathy and called for help from a local hunter. The hunter, who turned out to be an elderly man, didn't bat an eye at the leopard's comical situation and immediately got down to business. To do so, he tied the predator's paws together and brought it down to the ground. Then the old man asked his companion to bring some lamp oil. When the hunter finally obtained what he wanted, he smeared the edges of the can with oil and carefully pulled it towards himself. In response, the leopard growled discontentedly but after a couple of minutes, it was free. By looking at its face and the tongue sticking out, it was clear that the animal was suffering from hunger and thirst. After cautiously giving the predator some water to drink, the hunter, taking all necessary precautions, released it back into the wild. But the story did not end there. It later turned out that the leopard had fallen into a gruesome and inhumane trap set by one of the locals. Seeing a young leopard in the vicinity, the scoundrel placed a piece of meat inside an empty can and left it in a deserted area. He knew that by tempting the predator with the treat, it would inevitably stick its head into the can. According to his plan, the animal would become weak from hunger and thirst and turn into an easy prey. It's hard to say what guided the poacher to resort to such a barbaric hunting method against the leopard. Perhaps the leopard had caused some harm to his property, or maybe the man simply wanted to exert power over the defenseless predator. Whatever the case may be, it is important to always remember not to inflict cruelty and violence upon animals because the law of karma is always in effect, and anyone can find themselves in a similar situation. What happened and what is the direction of the story? If this is your first time here, and if you want to find new facts that will make you more aware and better informed, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss anything. The man attacked the woman, but he didn't know she wasn't alone. The girl went out with her child and dog and walked beside the forest belt, but the gangster was about to attack an unsuspecting mother. However, the dog bravely rescued the mother and daughter from the attack. Kamara and his mother live in a country house next to a small village near the largest forest in Tiger District. Her father died, and she lived with her mother, Angela, and the children, which made life very difficult for them. Kamara had a lot of card games, which her mother left her, but her mother left home by chance and never came back. The mother used to make paper dolls at home and then take them to the village to sell them for money. Although the work did not bring her much money, she always loved and mastered it, which made the children in the village want to buy the toys she made. Kamara has been working to care for the children since her husband died in an accident. Then she lived in her mother's house. She grew vegetables and sold them in the village. She also cleaned the homes of some wealthy residents in the village. The mother wants her children to get the life they want. After entering school, she bought thick winter clothes and school supplies to take her daughter to school. 
In winter, especially when income sources become scarce, the mother is even more uncomfortable because she doesn't have enough money to meet her needs and those of her children. The mother could not help but shed tears as she looked at her daughters, for she could not buy everything she needed in winter. But they were all very happy, for they spent most of their time playing and entertaining at home, so that they could forget these sufferings. Suddenly, the child came to tell Kamara that someone was coming, so Kamara asked these people why they came to her house, and one of them told her that they had been in prison with her late parents, but then they died in prison due to physical reasons. Kamara was so shocked that she shed tears that she plucked up the courage to ask these people why their parents were in prison and how their parents were related to them. The escaped prisoner told her that they had brought her parents' paper to make dolls, but they were refused to pay for the paper every time, and they were assured that they would return it next time. However, her parents failed to keep their promise, so they still owe them a lot of money. They came this time because they had just escaped from prison and could not find anything to eat for the time being. The mother found herself in an awkward position because she had no money to give these men, so she wanted them to come back another day. But these men refused to leave and insisted on taking the money. The woman kept looking at them and asked them to leave her house because she had no money. After that, the three men asked her to bring them food before they would leave. Then, they sat by the fire and waited for food. Angela brought all the food in the kitchen and gave it to these people, hoping that they would leave and calm her and her three children. But when they finished eating, they threatened her that if she didn't give them money, they would kidnap the child. Hearing this, the mother trembled all the time, because she couldn't imagine that these men were going to kidnap her most precious children, and then she began to plan a life-saving plan. The mother told the thieves that she would send her daughter to the neighbors to bring them money, and she accompanied her to the door, and then she told her daughter to run quickly to the forest and not to go home, because these people were going to hurt her. When her daughter left the house, her mother began to scream and asked her to run quickly. Then the escaped gangsters found that the girl was running away. They immediately stood up, beat the mother standing at the door, knocked her down, and began to chase the girl, trying to arrest the girl and take her hostage. The girl continued to run through the wood, while the men followed her, while the mother put on her coat and closed the door, and ran behind them in search of her daughter. It was less than 20 degrees below zero, and the mother was very worried about her daughter, because it was getting dark and her daughter had never been to the forest alone, so she must be very scared. Kamara heard the voices of the men following her, and she grew even more frightened when she realized they were approaching her. They followed her footsteps in the snow, so that she wouldn't slip into the woods. Fortunately for the girl, she came to a place in the forest where trees and jungles interweave, and then she used her emaciated body to get into the jungle. Confused, the gangsters looked around for her. Night fell, and the sound of the wild beasts in the forest began to ring, and the girl felt very frightened, but she went on walking. Suddenly, a small village appeared not far from the forest. Keisha was very happy. She had to run quickly before the gangsters found her. As the girl scurried among the trees, she found her faithful puppy nursing its two cubs. The girl was afraid that as soon as she stood up, the dog would protect her, and then the girl stood firmly in place and did not move. The danger she is encountering comes from the fierce animals in the forest and the thieves behind her. I met this child in this situation, time passed slowly, and it was very cold outside. She squatted on the ground, and the dog approached her and kept smelling, while the girl trembled with fear. When the puppy approached her and began to play with her, she calmed down a little. The big dog showed great kindness and calmness, and watched its cubs play with Kamara. At the same time, the girl heard footsteps approaching here. She realized that they were the three gangsters chasing her. Then she held the puppy, closed her eyes and continued to wait. When the gangster approached Kamara and tried to snatch her from among the puppies, the big dog jumped out and broke its fangs. The men didn't give up. They insisted on arresting the girl because they wanted to take her hostage for money. When one of them attacked and grabbed the girl's hand and pulled it out, she attacked and kept beating them. She hit her friends, so the gangsters kept surrounding her children and women. 
When these men tried to attack again, the dog confronted them fiercely, repulsed them so hard that they were wounded and immediately expelled them, and it chased them through the forest until they retreated completely, and then returned to its cubs. Just then the mother came here, and greeted the forest guard, spotted it on her way to her daughter, and was astonished at how she lay between the two puppies. When the girl saw her mother, she ran to her and hugged her. The dog came back with her cubs and continued to nurse them. Angela took her daughter's hand and went home under the guidance of forest guards. Angela took her daughter's hand and returned home with the forest guard. The forest guard promised them that he would report the case to the city police so as to arrest the thieves as soon as possible. On the way back, Kamara noticed the dog and its cub following her, as if confirming the woman and her family. Then they got home and the dog returned. From that day on, the dog and his cubs came to her house every day, and she would receive the puppies in the yard, play with them and give them food. A few days later, my mother learned that three gangsters had been arrested and sent back to prison. Of course, if Kamara was punched with a bottle again, she would definitely die, but her loyal dog saved her at the right time. The most loyal dogs are extremely loyal to the human family, and although they are often happy to make new friends, they are well aware of their duties. Thank you for watching. Please like it and share the video on social networks. We will reply to you as soon as possible.